Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. Today is a discussion video and it's a response to Borders Dude, my good friend. And uh, he just made a video today, uh, earlier today, talking about is it a good time to be a Transformers fan in the UK? And I just wanted to just do a little response to his video um, and just talk about what I think about the current situation. I mean... <clears throat> I've done a video of this of this nature quite a few times over the years on the uh, you know over the years and um and to be honest with you I would say being a Transformers fan now with the amount of toys we do have our at, at our disposal um the amount of toys that we're getting and some of the some of the characters that are getting masterpiece treatment that we never thought in a million years. If we went to, if we wanted to go back ten years, maybe yeah. If we wanted to go back about five plus ten, maybe maybe even longer, and we say, oh, I would love to see a masterpiece of this character, and then all of a sudden we now have masterpieces of the characters of some of the characters that in within the Transformers uh, continuity that we never thought we would ever get, and. Um, the future is looking quite bright in the masterpiece kind of thing that it looks like Hasbro and, and well, Takara mostly are finally kind of embracing that. Okay, they're kind of going into different territory with the masterpieces. Um, so for me, um, I would say yes, it is. But at the same time, there is still issues. Um, one of the issues that I share with uh, John, aka Borders, Borders Dude, um, is mostly the exclusives where Hasbro just kind of tease the fans and we think oh wow we're finally going to get that character and those people that like to collect like all the seekers and the cone heads and things like that of that nature and we think oh we're finally going to be able to get like a, a modernization of the whole selection of those characters and then they go ahead and make it either a target exclusive or an Amazon Amazon, Amazon exclusive I mean, to be honest, Amazon isn't so much of a problem, but there has been some figures within the last year or so that have gone up as an Amazon exclusive, but they wasn't... Um, basically, it was Amazon America. Um, and there was some figures that were uh, put up as an exclusive on Amazon, but you couldn't... They wouldn't ship to the UK. It was an exclusive to the... Amazon America only so that was a bit of a twat but luckily we do have on our side shot, uh, online stores like in demand toys and kapow toys and so on and so forth um, that are UK based and they do manage to get a lot of the exclusive figures that we can pre-order that is also another thing I don't like is pre-orders I'm not a big fan of the pre-orders I know pre-orders have been a thing for a long time but um I think the pre-order thing is... A, I don't know. I, I just don't like pre-orders. Um, you know, having to wait so long for the figures to release. And I've had the issues with having... With really long waits when I've had to, when I've pre-ordered a figure. Like, I, I mean, it's got nothing to do... It's, it's not the fault of Kapow or In Demand or any of these stores that are doing it. It's got nothing to do with them. They simply are... Getting the figures that the fans are wanting and putting them out there for us to buy. But then at the moment in 2020, we have this current situation at the minute that is causing issues with with stock and with uh, shipping and with delivery and uh, like the whole, you know, the whole virus thing that has caused issues and has caused toy lines to be pushed back to later in the year, etc. And those people that probably managed or were lucky enough to get in quite early with the pre-orders and thinking, oh, this is, say, coming out in September. Um, and then all of a sudden, then they get a notification saying, unfortunately, you know, you know, it has been pushed back. And uh, it could be out like January or February next year because of the situation. And that has happened a few times where a lot, a lot of uh, really anticipated figures have been pushed back but again i stress it's got nothing to do with the with kapow or any of the other online uh, toy stores um it's got nothing to do with them 
it's just the, the current situation we're in and being able to get the the, the stock through and it's causing problems for, and obviously a lot of companies that went into fair long as well where a lot of people wasn't able to work for a long time and they had to social distance if they had the virus and things like this and um, a lot of issues so it caused problems when it came to producing the figures and getting the stock out there for the demand so um so of course unfortunately they had to do uh, you know had to be all some some figures had to be pushed back so so yeah um i mean like I say, if, even even though i do stress that i do think pre-orders are a bit of a problem i don't like them at all um i would just much more like it if there was more stock available so that you know ooh, ooh that's available i'll buy it right now and it will get to me within about two or three working days i prefer that um and uh, like we're saying about the exclusives as well um that john was right uh, raising in his in his video uh like uh, they just made is it is it frost um i think it's frost um they just kind of the, the, they announced they were releasing him um and then all, and they've released the other ones in like a in like a collection um and also the seekers they've released all those but then all of a sudden like the the one that we want that that fans wanted in order to complete that set then they go ahead and say oh, it's a target exclusive and now it's all sold out and now we have to try and put our hopes and and hopes and pray, prayers into kapow or any of the other online stores that when we just hope that they will manage to be able to get hold of some sort of an allocation so that mm -hmm. those that have missed out on it can hopefully get it and complete their their little collection there. So, but with saying that, to those issues to one side that I do personally have, um, I would say it is a good time because there is a lot of a lot of choice. Um, I know there'll be other people out there that will say, oh, I, I don't really like the the official toys. I don't like the Takara toys. I don't like the Hasbro. I just don't see the fascination with them. I would much rather pay my money towards a third party figure or a knockoff figure. And then they've got the other side of the bracket that are all for the official releases and that do not support any third party or knockoffs. You know, you've got both sides of the fan base and everyone's going to have their own opinion when it comes to something like this, um, of course. But um, for me personally, um, like I was saying about when I brought Masterpieces into it, we have got a lot of Masterpiece figures coming out now that some of them, yeah, I will say there has been issues with QC issues, um, but end of the day, it's a gamble with anything. You know, if you pre-order something... Um, like a masterpiece figure, you know, so there is going to be the odd the odd figure that has unfortunately gone through QC that's going to have issues. Um, maybe we, it might may, may break or something like that. But that's been there for since masterpiece first started. The very first masterpiece figure I picked up was at Auto Assembly twenty ten. It was pre 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 owned, and it was um. From Tony, Sound of SG One, and Nick Stall at at, at the, uh, back then, um, I don't blame them too. I was just, I'm just I'm just saying that's the store that I bought it from, and uh, the leg broke, <clears throat> and uh, it, I found out later. And obviously, I was new to the whole collecting thing. I didn't know, and apparently, that was a design flaw with that specific Hasbro masterpiece Optimus Prime. Um, and uh, the leg broke and I thought maybe I can fix it and I probably could have had but I ended up not bothering and that figure's gone, long gone um, so yeah, now I'm very, very um, I kind of watch first before I ever invest in money in buying a masterpiece figure I wait to see what are the figures actually worth buying before I actually start shelling out the amount of money that they're asking for some of these figures um, but um but no, like the the like with masterpiece we've got like ma we've got some Beast Wars figures. I personally absolutely love Beast Wars, and many of you already know this. So I'm very happy that we've got Tigertron, Cheetor, um, Primal. We've got three versions of the Primal uh, masterpiece mold, um, Megatron, 
Um, what else have we got? I think that's it. Into, oh, Dan Bar. Yeah, I think that's... Oh, Black Arachnia as well. <clears throat> I think currently. Um, so the future is bright when it comes to the masterpiece market for that side. Because I never thought in a million years they would embrace Beast Wars like they have done. Um, obviously, Beast Wars is coming back into it in, in the cartoons with part of the Kingdom series, which I'm very... Uh, uh, the toy line for the Kingdom... That's coming back and also they're going to be in the Netflix uh, animated series as well. Hopefully in part three. Um, which I'm very excited about. And obviously they're going to be um, doing the whole new brand new comic book to mark the anniversary for next year. Um, so I'm really quite happy that they are finally embracing and celebrating Beast Wars. Because it was a line that was very much forgotten. The, the only people that remembered it with us that our other was that followed it from when it first aired like myself um i was about um i was probably about six maybe about six years old roughly when beast was first aired in the uk and ever since i first watched it since being a kid i've been a huge huge fan of it and i used to have toys years ago from some of from, from beast machines and beast wars um when i was a kid and I just absolutely love that toy line. And I absolutely love that actual part of the franchise. And um, I never thought, if I was to go back 10 years ago, um, I never thought that we would get any sort of celebration or any sort of support for the franchise because it felt like there was no future for it, um, unfortunately. But now there is a bit of a future. There's a new toy line. There's a, there's going to be a... a going to be going back into it into a new sort uh but they have come back into it a little bit they brought primal back in the machinima uh the, the the last series of the machinima series but i never watched that because generally i don't like it um but they brought him back there and they brought a new toy out for primal which was like a like a retool of something else i think um so for the last couple of years they've been embracing the Beast Wars thing and fan Beast Wars fans that are fans of that side of the franchise have been saying, Oh, could we finally see some sort of a future? And it looks like the future is quite bright with that side of it and I'm very happy with that. And I can't wait to see if the future is and obviously they're talking about um a la a, a feature length movie, like cinema, feature length massive uh summer blockbuster movie or whatever that could be based within the Beast Wars timeline so I'm very happy about that as well so when it comes back to the toys I'm actually quite content with the toys I haven't gone stupid because I don't have the room like everybody don't have uh, wish they had as much room as they could possibly have so they could cram as much as they wanted into the, into their collection rooms but I my bedroom is only small and I am literally at my limit at the moment with space so but I'm actually really quite happy because there is some really the, the last I would say of the last couple of toy lines I quite like the Titan Returns line even though there was some figures in that toy line that didn't make any sense being a headmaster, they just did it as a gimmick on every single character that was in that line, obviously, because that was the whole idea. But, you know, making like Optimus Prime a headmaster, he never was, he was a target master. Um, and other characters like Rodimus Prime and things and Hot Rod and things like that, those characters, there were certain characters that were only target masters, um, not headmasters. But they made the entire line. It, to, to a point, that line didn't make much sense. But on the other side of things, they did actually make some pretty nice updated actual headmaster characters in within that line, which I do like. Um, and also, I like the... Uh, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of the new line that's out at the moment. That's, that's uh, part of the Siege line. I quite like that line as well. So to answer the question finally and to finish this video off, I really do think it is a good time to be a fan, but it also there is still issues out there, mostly with the two things I did bring up earlier in this video, which were I don't like the whole idea of everything pre-order, pre-order. I prefer the time of where some, you know, something releases and 
it goes up it goes up on the day of release and then oh look great it's available buy it now i get it in a few days not like i pre-order it and have to wait about six months for it to come i don't like that whole idea um and i don't like like that's the similar thing that john brought up in his video where they bring out a, a figure that would finally complete a little collection they tease us and then Hasbro go and pull this thing where it's a, an exclusive at Target or whatever you. And obviously we don't have a Target here in the UK. We don't have any of those stores. So we can't get hold of it in retail. And obviously that's all that's all sold out now anyway, which was the thrust, I believe. So they do things like that. So Hasbro, they need to... They need to they obviously Hasbro have never really had much of a respect for collectors. They have actually said multiple times that collectors are adult collectors are a very small, uh, a very very small bracket of the of the toy sales. Um, obviously, the the bigger latter side of it is kids buying, uh, you know, kids buying the toys because it is a, it is a, you know, they are for kids, they are toys, but um, but the, because we are quite a small margin, considering there's collectors of of Transformers all over the world. We are still seen at Hasbro and, and possibly Takara as well as a very small market. But the thing is, I think Takara's got the head screwed on because I think Takara embraced the adult collector by the weather finally bringing us really nice re, uh, recolors and really nicely detailed figures that are mass produced figures part of a toy line. And obviously they are bringing us a lot more options that we never would have seen before within the masterpiece realm as well. So yeah, I mean I'm much I'm, I prefer my Takara figures. Most of the toys now have been produced by Takara, anyways. Uh, Hasbro still are producing the toys, but it, if you notice a lot of the figures, if you look up, if you buy something at the moment in in toy shops, it says Takara Tomy, not Hasbro in the corner. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show you that I'm quite happy that Takara is becoming a bit more. Um, the 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 Takara the the, the Takara products are becoming a bit more readily available than there was ever before. If you wanted a Takara exclusive, or if you wanted a Takara, like because obviously Hasbro always produced years ago. Hasbro produced. A, a, a toy and it was pretty pretty cool and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden you got the Takara version of that toy and they kind of like any paint application that was missed on the Hasbro one was kind of re-looked at and it looked much nicer and then but then you had to go online in order to, in order to portray or you know to buy some sort of a special import figure um by Takara and now yes that is still there to a degree but they are much more readily available than they ever were before, and I really like that. Really, I'm, I'm much more. I'm a big fan of the uh, Takara side of it. Um, always have been. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I hope you got the gist of that. My, my response there, John uh, Borders, dude. Um, so that's the video. So thank you very much to everyone for watching. And thank you to John Borders, dude, for making his video. Obviously, we're making uh, making me to do a video response to it. Um, so yes, awesome. Um, I'm actually quite content with it. I do have a little issues here and there, but you know, you know, it's never going to be 100% ironed out. There's always going to be issues that come up um, when it comes to being a collector. There always there always has been struggles for us collectors. Um, but I would say that as well, another issue is it is still a problem for like other parts of the, like the UK stock, like I live in Hull and the stock, the, the toy stock is bad. Um, our toy shops don't really have that many of the current line. They probably are very, 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 very behind but we're still quite behind when it comes to the toy lines here. Uh, we've still got figuring headmasters on the or headmaster figures on on the shelves here. Uh, we do have a couple of the siege toys here, but uh, they're very few and far between. So <clears throat> I would say that is still a problem. Is instead of having to go online 
and, and having to go through kapow or in demand or whatever, it is still becoming a, it's still a bit of a problem for a lot of fans and myself included in that to actually go to a toy shop that is that and physically buy it retail, it physically buy it in hand there and then. That is still still a big problem that needs to be addressed, but I don't think it will because the UK has always been seen as a very small margin within the within the market of these toys, and sadly I don't think we're ever going to get the stock numbers that we would love to have. But there we go. Thank you again. See you soon.